good Saturday morning. I am so glad to be a part of your weekend. I'm glad you're a part of my weekend. There's nothing like getting up on a Saturday morning and the sun is shining and it looks like a great day to do all of the things that uh, uh, we need to do today. Uh, I read a really funny thing uh, just a little while ago. It was about <clears throat> uh, this morning I got up to do the laundry and then it talked about, then you get distracted and you do something else, you do something else, you do something else. And it ends with saying, and that's why I didn't do the laundry today. And so um, um, that's kind of been my life for the last little bit. I'm just wondering, I'm sitting here next to uh, an air conditioner. Is that making a noise? Can you all hear it? Do I need to turn it off? Or are we good? Can you hear me pretty good? Let me see. Everybody's watching. They're saying good morning. Sally's giving me a heart. Linda's watching. I'm just going to turn it off. Hold on. There you go. Oh. Oh, Eileen says she can hear, and now everybody can hear because I turned it off. All right, I'm in a different spot today, as you can see. Those of you who have been here to the house, you recognize I'm here in my den. Right behind me is my little desk area, and um, uh, we got a new modem yesterday, and I don't know. I'm just hoping the picture's a little bit better and everything's a little bit better. So, let's get started. It is a glorious day to be a part of the house of the Lord today, right? And to be in his presence and to have the whole day to look forward to. And then tomorrow is Sunday. And the glorious part about all of our churches being online is we can watch everybody's service. We can just have a an all day uh, marathon, with, oh, binge. We can, we can just binge on church tomorrow. And um, uh, I just, I'm gonna tell you, I'm anxious to get back in our building but I'm not so anxious that uh, I want to do something foolish. And so I thank God for online. I thank God for this ability for us to be able to talk and see each other and then to listen to all of our favorite pastors. This way I get to go to our church at 9 o'clock and, <clears throat> and then I attend John's church at, uh, at 11. And so good, good stuff. I, I'm watching North Cleveland's services um so it, all these good services i'm i'm really happy and what greater way to spend a june morning than to watch all of your favorite ministers maybe it's your brother-in-law maybe it's your uncle i don't know but to be able to watch all of those great services so this morning we're ready and i want to give out a shout out to mary gillum and to my brother-in-law aaron I'm drinking my coffee this morning out of my U.S. Air Force cup. Um, Sally gave me this cup. My brother-in-law is retired Air Force, and Mary Gillum is also retired Air Force. And so, a uh, big shout out to the Air Force. Ooh. Good stuff. All right. So this morning, we're going to finish Psalm 101, but I kind of want to start with 100 again. I kind of want to start with uh, 100 again, so I'm going to. All right, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Do I hear that again? I do. Shout for joy to the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord. The whole earth. all The whole earth. And then worship the Lord with gladness and with songs, joyful songs. Come before him with joyful songs. Um, you know, um, occasionally Steve and I will be listening to the radio and this sad song will come on, you know, and it's just heartbreaking and yeah, it's just pitiful sad and and uh, I know that there are times maybe 
for sad songs, but I love a joyful song. I love a song that raises me up. I, When I'm cleaning house, I like to listen to Judy Jacobs because her songs are up and they're vibrant and they've, they've got me going and I'm praising the Lord and I'm cleaning the house too. All right, know that the Lord is God. The, uh, the Lord is, he's God. He's God, Philip, he is God. And it is he who has made us and we are his. We are his. Just think about that. I've known Philip Davis since he was a little boy. I was one of his teachers and I was one of his principals. And when we think about how we've known somebody since they were for a child, from a child, and, and then now, now he's a grown man. I don't even want to think about how old he must be now, Philip. But it, to know somebody, you know, that just gives us joy. And to know that the Lord is God and he made us, he made Philip, he made all of you who are watching, he made all of us. Then, so then when we come together and we say, we are his, I belong to him. I belong to him. I'm going to tell you one of the greatest joys in my life is when, uh, was, was when uh, I go to John's church. Our son John is the senior pastor at Rockville Church of God. I cannot say that often enough. But when I go to his church, they introduce me as, oh, this is John's mommy. <laughs> this is John's mommy. This is John's mom. And uh, Lisa, the first time that happened, she was like, I'm so sorry. And I said, I'm not. I love that I belong to John Lowry. I love that John Lowry belongs to me. He is mine. He is mine. So when we think about our relationship with our Heavenly Father, mind-blowing. I am His. I belong to Jesus Christ. I belong to Jesus Christ. That's why I can shout a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Oh, they think they're going to come against me? Think again, because I am his, and he is mine. He is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. That means he's watching over me. He's taking care of me. He's making sure that everything in my life has, has a shield and a barrier between me and that. I just, I was going to leave the door open here. I'm here sitting here in my den and I was going to leave the door open and it really got, really got pretty hot in here fairly quick. So, uh, so I shut the door and so that door now is a barrier between me and whatever the temperature is outside. It's a barrier now. And that's what Jesus is between us and all of these things that are trying, going to try to come against us today. We have that barrier, we have that shield, we have that hope because he is the buffer between us and everything the enemy wants to bring in our life because we're in his hand. We're in his hand. If I take my communion wafer and I put it in my hand, well, then my dog can't get it. No, nothing can get it. It's in my hand. It's secure there. It's safe in my hand. And there it's going to stay until it's ready to be used by me. So he is my shepherd. I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And that means I'm going to go into heaven with thanksgiving. But also today, I'm just going to enter into this day with thanksgiving. I'm going to go into this day with praise because wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are in the presence of the Lord is, well, then that's his sanctuary. That's his place. My house doesn't look like a sanctuary, but because the Spirit of the Lord dwells in this house, it is a sanctuary. It is a sanctuary. Wherever you are, I hope that you are making sure that the presence of the Lord is in every room in your house. It's in every part of your house, and it's down in the basement or up in the attic or wherever you, whatever you have in your house. And I hope the presence of the Lord is there because where he dwells, that is his sanctuary. That is his sanctuary. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Now we're going to finish 101. Psalm 101. We started it yesterday. <clears throat> There's no way I'm going to go back into it, what we already covered, because last night during the prayer time, I just got to thinking about it. I just mentioned a couple of things. And I told Steve afterwards, honestly, I feel like I could, I could just stay in Psalm 101 for weeks and weeks. I'm not going to because, you know, I want to go forward. But, oh my goodness, there's so much meat. Uh, there's so much meat in just this one chapter of, of Psalm. And it's it's from David. 
but it, then I'm, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to go ahead. And I'm, I think I got to six yesterday. I think that's right. Because we talked about, five was about um, people who come to us with gossip and, and those who uh, come before us with uh, slander. I'm going to tell them, shut up. I'm going to say, um, don't bring that to me. So Psalm 101.6, ready? My eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. He whose walk is blameless will minister to me or serve with me. Now, David is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at those who are faithful. You know, sometimes we get our eyes, or, or I know I do, we get distracted by people who are not faithful. Uh, I, was just, uh, I was just looking at some things on Facebook, which is almost never a good idea, but uh, there were a couple of things that were on Facebook, Facebook that were put, you know, by people of, uh, uh, I guess, influence or authority. And I was like, come on, nobody's going to believe that. No, 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 that's just dumb stuff. And as I felt myself start to get kind of agitated over about it, then uh, that's when I read this little funny thing about when I started you know, I thought I was going to do my laundry. And then I saw several of you, several of you have posted scripture and have posted inspirational things that really turn that thing around for me. So I'm, I'm just going to be on the faithful in the land. I'm not going to worry about those who are not faithful to God. They're not faithful to his walk. They're not faithful in their following him. They are not holy. They are not seeking holiness. As a matter of fact, they're saying that those of us who are holy, that we're fools, that we're stupid. And so I'm going to walk away from that. I'm not going to look at that anymore. I'm just going to block that foolishness from my eyes. I'm going to come into alignment with those who are faithful. I'm going to come into alignment with those who are holy. Uh, holy. Because once you are in alignment, once you're in alignment, everything is working. You know, um, uh, I've had this hip surgery and for uh, for a while, and, and still, to some extent, I, I have a limp. And because of that limp, because, uh, because I favor one side a lot, well, that means that, you know, I'm kind of out of alignment. And so, <clears throat> when I'm really tired, or when I've been walking a lot, or when I've been sitting a lot, uh, so, uh, in other words, one position a lot, I can tell I'm out of alignment. And it does, it means that not just my hip is bothering me, but I've got a headache and my arms hurt and my feet hurt. When you're out of alignment, every part of the body hurts when you're out of alignment. But when you are in alignment and when you've got your eyes on other faithful people, when you've got your eyes on the Word of God, when you're not looking to the right or to the left, you're not worrying about these evil people, you're not worrying about uh, wicked people, you're not listening to wicked people or evil people. When you've got yourself focused, when you've got your life in alignment, when you've got your eyes focused, then you are following in the footsteps of Christ and you're doing it with other people who are also faithful. I am so tired of people saying there's really not any good Christians left. What a lie from the pit of hell. What a lie from the pit of hell. There are millions and millions of faithful people who love the Lord, who are seeking him, who are asking for him, who are knocking on his door, who are reading his word. I would say now more than ever, ever, people are so deep into his word, either by reading it themselves or by being Bible studies like we are with one another and learning from one another and teaching one another. And we're open. We have an open mind to the word of God. I'm not going to be distracted today by wicked people. Are there wicked and evil people? Yeah. Yeah. God warns us about that. He talks to us about that. And David is saying here, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to walk with those whose lives are blameless. I'm going to minister with them. I'm going to serve with them. And I'm going to let them minister to me. I'm going to let them minister to me. You know, uh, Steve and I 
for years have said, be careful about letting people lay hands on you that you don't know. Listen, in at our church, you have to be sanctioned by Pastor uh, Wright and by uh, Steve before you can go out and minister and lay hands. I don't want somebody with a weird spirit laying ha their hands on me or any of our people. And, and I'm going to tell you, uh, before this corona thing came about, we had this uh, young man who came to our church, and, and he's troubled, he's challenged, and he was always wanting to lay hands on people. And um, a weird spirit happening there. And so uh, I, I went up to him, and I said, you know, very kindly, I said, listen, you know, we love that you're here, and, and we're so happy that you're seeking God, but right now, you know, you're going through a, a struggle yourself, and so I'm going to ask you not to lay hands on people. I don't want some strange spirit going into someone that I love and someone who's trusting me to protect them. And so I'm just going to tell you today, be careful who you're following. Be careful who you're letting minister to you, serve with you, talk with you. Be careful about that because David is saying, I'm not going to let anyone who practices deceit, they're not going to dwell in my house. I'm not, I'm not going to let them dwell in my house. Um, Maya Smith, our oldest granddaughter, who loves to have her friends come over and be here in the house. I will say she knows all the rules about whoever's going to come in my house. And, and I'll say I'm going to tell you why. Because this house is the pastor's house. But I'll, maybe more importantly, this is my house. And this is Pap's house. That's what the kids call um, safe Pap. And so I said, and we don't allow anything like that. We don't let people come in our house who are bringing in bad stuff. We don't let people in our house. That's why it says, no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house, and no one who speaks falsely is going to stand in my presence. I'm not going to let somebody just stand in front of me and stand there and lie to me and tell me a bunch of garbage. I've gotten old enough and bold enough to say, you know, old and bold rhyme, that, that's kind of good. I'm not going to let them just stand there and say falsehoods to me or, or twist God's words around. I'm going to stand and say that. No, no, that's not right. That doesn't sound right to me. Say that one more time. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Uh, you know, uh, when you get bold enough that you have authority to speak God's word and to say to somebody, that's not, that's not right. No, uh-uh. Stop. Stop saying that. Just stop. You're not going to say that to me. You're not going to say that in my presence. You're not going to say that in the presence of my family members. You're not going to say that in the presence of my church. I mean, listen, being a pastor's wife, uh, of, a, of a large church, we see all kinds of people, all kinds, all kinds of people. And I have learned that I have to be bold and I have to be able to tell them, no, you're not, no, 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 that's not the truth. You know, you're not going to bring that in here. No, <laughs> Sally said old enough and bold enough. It is, it, it's the truth. You get to a place in your life and, and you don't have to be my age. You get to a place in your life where you've decided, I'm going to follow Jesus. And that means I'm not going to have other people clinging to me. You know, one of the other verses said, I'm not going to let those people, oh, the deeds of faithless men I hate, and I'm not going to let them cling to me. I'm not going to let them attach themselves to me. Have you ever had somebody attach themselves to you? I have. And there comes a time where you have to remove that thing. You know, if you have a tumor, if you have a tumor, there comes a time where that thing needs to be removed. If you have, if you have a growth of some kind, there comes a time where that thing has to be removed. If you have just, it can be just a tiny little thing. I've had, I've had several moles that I've had to have uh, taken off. And, and, you know, they were tiny, but they were worrisome or troublesome, <clears throat> whatever they called them, and they had to be removed. And once they were removed, gone. That's the way we're going to be with these wicked people and these people who want to lie, these people who want to come into our house, into our presence, into our mind, into our spirits, into our cell phones. 
the plug for Carol printing there. Uh, they want to come in. They want to be a part of our life. And David is saying, I'm not going to let them stand in my presence. And then he goes on to say, every morning, every morning, I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. Now, how on earth is David going to put to silence all the wicked in the land? He has the determination. He has the commitment. He has God on his side, and that's how he's going to do it. That's how you and I are going to do it, and that's how we're going to all encourage each other to do it. Every morning, I'm going to get up, and I'm going to say, no evil will stand in my presence today. No evil will stand in my presence today. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to say it. No evil will come near my dwelling today because I refuse to be overcome by evil today. It says, every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. And then he says, I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. I'm just going to cut them off. I'm going to cut them off. Oh, that that relative that that only comes around when they need something or, and maybe I shouldn't say relative. I shouldn't have said relative. Forget that. But these people that, they only come around when they're in trouble and, uh, and they want to bring trouble in your house and they want to bring drama in your house and they're, and they're sitting there and they're smoking and they're swearing and they're doing drugs and you know all of that's going on and I'm not saying, yeah, I am saying. So, so, we're just going to say, I'm going, I'm just, I've got to, you can't come in my house. My sister Sally had asthma when she was little. I think she still does a little bit. And uh, my mom's brother and my mom's stepfather, uh, they smoked when, when they were young or when, when we were all young. Uh, and uh, Mickey just did for a while. But uh, my mother would say, and, and this is when people would come in your house and smoke. Uh, some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, but when I was a little girl, you'd go to restaurants, people are smoking, you'd go um, you know, in theaters, on a plane, smoke, smoke, smoke. And so uh, my mother would say to her brother and to her stepfather, uh, I don't care if you smoke, but you're going to have to smoke outside. You can't, you cannot smoke in my house and you can't smoke up close to my door because Sally has, uh, <laughs> Raina, that's the truth, because Sally has asthma. And so, um, nobody ever questioned that because my mom took authority over that thing and she said, it's not going to happen in my house. It's not going to happen, uh, near my front door. And when y'all go home, you do what you want to do. Uh, but, uh, if you're smoking in your house, then Sally can't come in. So I'm just putting that out there. So, uh, eventually Mickey was like, it's expensive habit anyway. So he quit smoking. When you get that boldness, when you get that authority, you can say, I'm just going to cut it off. Now I'm not saying they were smoking and evildoers, but I'm saying that was an illustration, but I'm saying you can cut it off. You can cut it off. Oh, you don't want. You don't want your, uh, your next-door neighbor who uh, swears. Uh, you don't want them swearing in front of you. Well, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to cut them off. You know, wave and, and let them know, thinking about you, good to see you, but you're not, you're not going to swear in front of me. I'm just, I'm just, I don't listen to television shows that swear. I don't read books where they're swearing. I don't want that in my spirit. I don't want that in my spirit. You know, if you're if you're in the grocery store, remember when we used to go to the grocery store, um, and, and music is playing, I don't know about you, but uh, music always gets in me, and, and then I'm singing, and, you know, I'm listening to it, and, you know, then I'm out in the car, and I'm like, what? What on earth am I singing? <laughs> I have to cut it off. I have to remove myself from that kind of thing. All right, so we're at we're to the end of Psalm 101, and maybe we'll go back through it, or maybe we won't. But the good news is that while I was waiting for uh, the time for it to be 10 o'clock, Hans, come here. While I was, he's kind of scratching around over there. Uh, then I was reading through 102, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, I love 102, and I'm, 
really love 103. I can't tell you how many times I've preached out of 103. And so all is good and uh, we're ready to go. So back in the olden days when we went to the grocery stores, right? Isn't this a weird, this is a weird situation. It's a weird situation. Uh, yesterday, Steve and I drove, or day before, down in front of Home Goods, and uh, I just sat out in the parking lot thinking, I miss you so much, Home Goods. So, eventually, eventually we'll go back to the store, right? Eventually we will. But in the meantime, please, please protect yourself. Please be careful. Please be careful. Now, let's see. Pamela Knight said, if you can't help me, please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try to block me. I've got a race to run, and I'm going to run it. Amen. Amen. Don't get in my way is right. Get out of the way. Get out of the way, Satan. All right. Now, let's take our communion wafer. I'm going to wait one second because maybe you've forgotten that we take communion. We're going to take communion every Saturday. Uh... And so we're gonna do that. Now, I've got um, something I just wanna talk about for a minute. And that is that Arika Trim, Donna Stewart's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful daughter. She had an emergency cesarean Tuesday before last, little boy, premature, but he's gonna be okay. And then this past Tuesday, um, Arika died suddenly. And our hearts are broken. Steve and I were on FaceTime for about two hours. We were out in the parking lot, in the parking garage of the hospital, and Donna had her phone uh, on FaceTime so that we could be there in the room with them and that we could pray and uh, continue to be with Erika. And um, she did. She passed. So her funeral services will be at National Church this coming Thursday morning. 10 o'clock is the viewing. 11 o'clock will be the funeral. Then they are taking her home to Tobago. And so there are several places where you can give to GoFundMe. And you can help with um, uh, the funeral expenses. And also, of course, taking her to Tobago. And uh, so I, I encourage you to help with that. It's GoFundMe. I, I know a couple of you... Uh, do not use GoFundMe for a lot of reasons, um, all good reasons. Uh, and so if you want to text me, then I can tell you uh, a more direct route if you want to do that, if you want to do that. Or or you can use the GoFundMe. And they've already raised thousands of dollars. Within a couple of hours, they had raised thousands of dollars, which I just give God the glory for. And so uh, Arika Trim. It's her name. She's a graduate of, of Lee University. Absolute, one of the joys of our life was knowing Arika. And uh, she had a powerful prayer ministry. And so she will be greatly missed. And um, I don't understand, but I do trust God. And so having said that, let's take our communion today. Uh Today, as we take our communion, I want us to do it with thanksgiving in our hearts because it is through the communion, the common union that we have with God, common union with God and with one another. You know, every time you sit down to eat, that's why you pray over your food because you're thanking God. I know we thank the hands that prepared it, but I think we should also thank the hands that gave us our hands. Thank the hands. Thank the hands that gave us uh, the money to buy the food, or the strength to prepare the food, or the ability to go somewhere and pick up food. I just think we need to all be so thankful and so aware of all of the things that we have in our life because of Jesus Christ. We have salvation. We have joy. We have deliverance. And what a wonderful thing! that when we can come together and have common union. And on that night, Jesus raised up the elements. He raised up that bread and he broke it. And he handed it out to his disciples. And he told them to eat and to take it, that this was his body. This was a representation of his body. 
and that by taking it into our bodies, we can receive healing. We can receive healing in Christ's name. Jesus. The blood of Jesus, it purifies, it cleanses, it heals. It removes impurities. When you have the blood of Jesus running through your veins, you don't have coronavirus running through your veins. He is protecting us. He is healing us. He is delivering us. And I think today that as we take this, we are praying for those who do have this coronavirus. And Lord, we're asking that today that there is healing in all of their bodies. Lord, healing in all of the bodies of those afflicted by coronavirus. Healing in the body of all of those who have cancer. Healing in the bodies of all of those who are going through chemotherapy. Healing in the body of all of those who have heart trouble, heart problems, heart disease, diabetes, those who are deaf, those who are blind, those who cannot speak, those who have challenges from birth. Lord, I pray today that as you cover us, as we take this juice into our bodies, Lord, that we would come under your protection and under your covering. In Christ's name, amen. Take the juice together. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your delivering power. Lord, we thank you for the joy that you have put into our bodies. Lord, we thank you for the healing that you're bringing into our bodies. We thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Lord, I thank you that you stand between us and any evil. Lord, I thank you that you give us that boldness, that you give us that authority to come against the enemy in your name and through your blood and by your power, because it is through your blood and by your power that we have all authority on earth. Lord, today I pray Lord, I pray for those who are afflicted with this coronavirus. Lord, I pray that you would heal them. Lord, I pray that those who are helping them, those who are ministering to them, Lord, that they would not be affected. Lord, we pray for our doctors and our nurses and all of our health care providers. We pray for all of our essential workers. Lord, that you would protect them. That Lord, that you would keep them. Lord, that you would keep this away from them. Lord, we ask that you would move this out into the seas and far, far, far away from all humanity. Lord, I pray today that you would come against the enemy. And Lord, we pray these things today knowing, knowing that we have a confidence that I can say, I am a child of God. I thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Just say hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I love you today. In Christ's name, in Christ's name. You get out there and you sing a new song today. You get out there and you whip the devil's rear today. Will you do it? I'm going to. I know you're going to, too. Hallelujah. God bless you. And Mary... I don't know if you were on before, but this is out for you, baby. You and Aaron. All right. God bless you. Love you so much. Bye-bye. See you Monday.